This is a weekly facilitated spiritual practice with a Quaker flavor and an experimental ethos. My name is Kat Green, and I'm a program fellow here at Beacon Hill Friends House, which is a Quaker center for learning and action and a residential community of about 20 people who live according to Quaker values. Tonight, we have Taylor Lena McToodle with the practice Rainbow Meditation. We will use visualizations for a meditation involving the chakras. At each stage, we'll write a few lines of poetry, and at the end, we should have a complete work that moves through our own bodies. For tonight's practice, please make sure you have something to write with. Now, I'm excited to introduce you to Taylor. Taylor Lena McToodle is a writer and educator from the Washington, D.C. area. She is currently Director of Education for a Black artistry organization in Boston, Castle of Our Skins. Taylor shares culture and theory through programming and curriculum building there. She loves a good story, even more so a good pun, and we're so excited to have her join Beacon Hill Friends House for a day. Again, welcome. We're happy you've joined us. Taylor, it's all yours. Hi, I'm so honored to, to join you all tonight and to, to hang out for the evening. Um, so thank you so much for the introduction. I am a writer and a poet. Um, and I think what's so important to me about language is that I, it's true that that life and death is in the power of the tongue. You know, in the beginning, there was the word. And so to me, this is why language is so important and why being constructive with language is so important. Um, and so today I'm gonna share with you a practice of my own that really has to do with um, immersing yourself in a specific state of mind, a specific mood. And what better way to do that within with color? I'm gonna share my screen. Um, I called this the rainbow meditation. It didn't have a name to begin with, but I think I would have changed the name to something like color immersion practice. Um, and to start, I just want to share um, poetry for me is a way of expressing something that feels inexpressible. Um, and so oftentimes I'll look outside of myself for, for the language to do that. I'll look for signs, I'll look for symbols, and I'll look for them in nature around me, but I also love to look for it in storytelling, in literature, but also in film. Um, and what I look for and what I end up noticing a lot of the times is those things which um, express certain emotions and feelings. One of the most accessible, accessible symbols that I tend to find is that of colors, right? In certain scenes and films, they'll be wearing a certain color to express a certain mood. Um, there's a movie called Carmen. And in the last scene of the movie, um, she's, she's actually, she's gonna die and she's wearing white and white has a certain symbolism. And there's a certain reason that, that, that she's wearing that color. And I'm always fascinated by what kinds of moods that are trying to be expressed really. Um, and they're more positive moods that are trying to be expressed. There's joy, there's, there's happiness, like the color yellow, there's passion, like the color red. Um, but there is a film that I wanted to share with you really quickly. I watched it this summer and what was fascinating about it is the way they used color symbolism. It's called The Cassandra Cat. It's a Czechoslovakian movie that was made in 1963. So I'm gonna share with you the trailer really quickly.
this small village um, in Czechoslovakia, well, actually in, in some unnamed place, um, they're visited by this kind of caravan of characters. And the caravan brings a cat and the cat is wearing sunglasses. When the cat takes off its sunglasses, everyone's true colors are shown. Um, and in this particular film, if one is red, that means you're a lover. That means you're good. That means you're good hearted. Um, I think if you're yellow, you were uh, a cheat. And if you were purple, you were a thief. Um, and so what's interesting is like, it was made in 1963 in Czechoslovakia in 1963, they were like kind of a, a they were a offshoot of the Soviet Union. They were a communist kind of country essentially. So the idea of red being a lover and red being the good color is, somewhat propagandistic it seems but it and so while I don't necessarily um I, I think that that it served its perfect purpose um I don't know if I agree with the color symbolism uh but I just thought it was such an interesting concept um there are other more complete uses of color though, more complete symbolisms of color. Um, and here I found a color wheel in, in all kinds of, of literature, color is used to express a variety of emotion. And a lot of times there's a duality to it. So there'll be a negative expression of this color and there'll be a positive expression. So if you think of the color red, it expresses love, but it also expresses anger. Um, if you look at the color orange, and I was really interested in this one because orange to me normally means jovial and friendly, but the negatives can be, it says here, a warning, frustration, overly emotional. Um, yellow being, and I'm only going to focus on the primary colors, yellow being positive in the sense of creativity, friendliness, confidence. But the negative side, which kind of the movie Cassandra's Cat got right, was deceitful. Um, cowardice, um, depression, hazardous. Um, and I also, uh, the, the, then moving on to um, purple is positives being creativity, negatives being um, arrogance. And, and the list goes on. So there can be a duality to these colors. Um, and that's, that's kind of, these all always aren't universal meanings, but I think this is a very good consolidation of what the possibilities are when you think about these colors. And then another cultural reference goes back to chakras in, in the Buddhist tradition. Um, they are these different energy centers in the body. And these energy centers allow you to feel open and present and, and whole and spiritually attuned. Um, and each of these energy so in each of these energy centers has a color that's associated with it. Um, so I'm not going to use the names of these energy centers because I'm I'm not a practicing Buddhist, but I am familiar with kind of the colors and the and the areas of the body. So I wouldn't want to appropriate in any way that it wasn't authentic to me. Um, but you know, at the at the base of the spine, you have kind of the root chakra, and that's where you're present to be here, right? Um, kind of around the navel is to feel, um, kind of around your, like right below your chest um, is to act. The heart, which I feel, which I, which I thought was interesting is represented by the color green. And I think I kind of expected it to be represented by the color red or something, but it's to love. Um, blue represents the throat chakra. Um, and purple represents the kind of right between the eyes to see. Um, and then, although this is also kind of a purplish color, really, it's almost prismic, right? Because the, the final, the crown chakra is kind of the collection of all the colors. It's just white light, right? Um, and so the practice I wanted to introduce today is an embodiment practice, an immersion practice, the idea is to think about these different chakras, think about these different um, abilities to be present, to feel, to act, to love, to speak, to see, to know. Um, and I think right now in our space and time, well-being is really important. And I think as introspective people, as spiritual people, we kind of know when we're off in any of those 
of those eras, areas. We know when we're a little bit off, when we're not really present, when we're really in our head. We know when we're not connecting with others. We know when we're not actualizing, you know, what we think is right. We know when we're not loving, when we're not speaking truth to power, when we're not bearing witness, right? And so I tend to use my poetry practice as a way of um, eradicating these feelings of imbalance. And so to do so with color immersion means looking at one of these areas, one of these colors, and really drawing inspiration from it intensely to the practice. Just checking. Um, are we with, are we, are we, are you, are you guys with me so far? Any questions so far? Yay, thumbs up. Any questions so far? Okay. That's good. So um, my first step is to pick my color based on my mood, my emotion, or possibly where I feel imbalance um, in my day to day. Um, and then the next step would be for me to kind of center that part of my body. You know, before you write, before you engage in kind of a spiritual practice of, of writing, journaling, whatever you call it, it's good to center yourself, to take a deep breath. But it's also great to have that tool, you know, of knowing where you want that breath to be centered, right? If you're having trouble being present, taking the breath into your the, the base of your spine and writing yourself to, to be present, to be in touch as you write. Sorry, I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times. So number three would be getting started with a list of things that are associated with that color. Um, that just prepares you to have your creative tools ready to go when, you're, when it's time to write. Um, and, and finally, to, to move through these visualizations as you write them down and then begin create, creating your poem. I'm gonna do a quick example that's kind of already prepared. I'm just gonna be honest about it. My example. I'm going to pick the color red. Um, I'm coming out with a book of poetry this year called Carmine. So this is not necessarily something new to me. I've, I, I, my favorite color has been like green for the longest, but my obsession with the color red is this desire to be more present um, in a digital age. I think that's something that's difficult to do. Um, and so Carmine is another word for red in other, in, in other words. Um, so my color is red. Red is located at the root chakra at the base of the spine. So as I prepare to write, I breathe in and I ready myself. I'm gonna make a list of, of um, words that are associated with the color red. So I have roses, wine, cherries, berries, rubies, uh, Ruby is, is a birthstone for cancers and my grandmother was a cancer. So I'm gonna write her name down too. Um, fire, apples, ladybugs, stop signs, sunset skies. Are there any other um, suggestions to add to that? I would love to hear your other associations with the color red. Awesome. So we have a nice list here. And I'm just keeping in mind that I really want to be present as I write my poem. And like I told you guys, I don't want it to be a surprise. This is already written. I wanted to, my example to be all ready for you. So I'm going to speak it. And this is a part of the practice as well, because although writing it feels good and it feels like it's balancing in itself, the aspect of also reading it aloud can also, it's, a, it's another activity entirely. It, you're, you're able to embody it. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like by writing, you're able to get it out. And by reading it, you're able to reprocess it in new ways. Um, so I'm gonna read mine aloud. Sunset, flaming skies, blooming into night. When wine runs the gamut of the glass, I am in love with alone here. Stopped in my tracks at the thought, the memory of innocent pleasures and childish passions, spitting cherry seeds in the grass and running fat fingers over grandma's ruby rings. Good luck ladybugs landing on me 
and lipstick on my teeth, flushed rosy cheeks and feeling so close to the blood beating earth that calls to me. It calls to me. So I think I also wanted my intention in writing this to really, and I, I hope, I wonder if in me reading that, did you get the color red? If not, that's perfectly fine. Did it feel red? Oh, I have some, oh, Fast Cars was a good one, cool. Um, heart was a good one also, I missed that. Um, so the idea is not only for it to feel red, but for it to also kind of achieve what I wanted it to achieve. I wanted it to achieve a sense of present moment. And while I was inspired in a different direction, if you look around here, I was inspired in the direction of thoughts and memories. By the end of it, I wanted to re-ground re myself in the moment. That's why I ended with that calls to me. It calls to me. I brought myself back to the present because remember the root chakra, the red chakra is at the base of the spine and represents being here, right? So I kind of wanted to keep that in mind. Um, does this feel, does this sound exciting to do, to practice? If not, I have no other plan. So we just got to go. <laughs> we got to go with this. Guys. <laughs> um, Awesome. So I'm going to go back to the directions and I hope you guys also will be excited to read at some point. Um, so in terms of timing to prepare for the poem, um, what kind of time do we think we would need and how much time do you want to use to write? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wonderful. I just love a group decision made. I think that's always an exciting thing. Um, so how about we'll do around, yeah, we'll do around 12 minutes and then I'll check for time around 10, 8, 10 and see where we're at. Um, first step is picking your colors. And I think we have enough people here where hopefully we'll, we'll span the rainbow. Um, but I can go back to the chakra so you guys have a second to pick the colors. And if you want to share what colors you're picking, uh, and why in the chat, that's also an exciting thing to do. Thank you, Kat. I would love to know what colors you guys are picking. All right. I am so looking forward to hearing what, what we've immersed ourselves in, what kind of visualizations, what kind of experiences, what kind of dream worlds we've immersed ourselves in to kind of balance our moods, our emotions. I'm excited for this.